for today's video we're going to take a look at a 1971 Olivetti Prima 20 mechanical adding machine. The introduction you've just seen will have been recorded at some point in the future, but for now let's have a look at the machine as it is. The condition is fairly good, it's quite nice and clean, but if you put in a number and then pull the handle to add that number, the handle is really grunchy as it returns, so I think the mechanism's probably a bit gummed up with old oil. So we'll take it apart and have a look at what's inside. So, challenge number one, getting inside the machine. It looks like if I flip up the printer reel cover there, then there's a little catch at the back here, which if I pull that back section, I can just get the back above that catch which allows the cover to move forward slightly. Then if I turn it round, that gives me just enough room with a little plastic pry bar so I don't scratch anything to get the front clips over the front plate. But it's still not off because it catches on the um, total button there. So you then seem to have to ease it over that carefully, which isn't easy, gently does it to get it off. It's a bit of a challenge design that really, but never mind. That's what they came up with. The bottom is somewhat easier. Uh, it turns out that the rubber feet just have a metal post that pushes through them and that simply, or not so simply, pulls out. That's the front done, and round to the back, see so what we can grab onto to do this bit. A uh, bit of chassis, we will get that pulled out from there. Let's have a look. That's that side, and that is the other side. Yeah, a bit of a challenged case fitting that. So, having a look at the mechanism itself, there's obviously a centrifugal governor here, which is all nice and free. And the first part of the mechanism, when you move the lever, is working fine. But when it engages the next stage, which actually moves the um, number counterpart, it's sticky. So there's probably dried old oil and grease that needs to be cleaned out and re-lubricated. Also, the um, ribbon itself is completely dried up and even quite mouldy, so that will need changing. The um, printing numbers are really filthy and they need cleaning, so I think I'll work my way through the machine and clean, re-oil and re-grease, and then see how we get on. OK, a little bit of a project update. After much cleaning and oiling, the machine now works without sticking. Once I'd done the oiling and greasing, it became apparent that it wasn't all working correctly. Although it would take the numbers in, when you did the total, it wasn't adding them into the accumulator, which is a similar problem to the one I had previously on a Burroughs adding machine. Looking at the underside of the machine, the accumulator lurks between these metal plates here. There are some toothed wheels that move in that direction and interact with these notched racks that in turn move the number wheels. But the accumulator was staying put, it wasn't moving in that direction. In the end it turned out that some of the linkages behind this plate here were tight and they needed freeing off. And now it all seems to be working correctly. So the next task is to clean the number wheels themselves. I'll see if I can do it without actually stripping the printer apart, but I might have to take it all to pieces yet. I'll see how I get on. Well, that was a lot more hassle than I thought it would be. It turned out that three of the number wheels, I think it was that one, that one and that one, were actually stuck to the metal plate beside them. And I had to free them off very carefully. I had to get a knife blade in and open out the gap between the wheel and the plate to get it unstuck from the old gunge and old oil. Um, but anyway, now they're all free and they're all cleaned up, so I think the next thing to do is to put a new ribbon on and give the thing a try. 
So next on the agenda we've got an old ribbon and we've got a new ribbon. So the first thing to do is to get the old ribbon off the rails. It shouldn't take too long and then it's just a case of wrap the new ribbon onto the rails and then fit it to the machine. Okay, what attachment method does it use? Right, it's just one of the hooky prong bits on the centre of the drum. So yeah, that should be fine. Get it off the other reel as well. Like that. Right, I'll give the reels a bit of a clean up before I actually fit the new ribbon. Okay, that's the reels cleaned. They needed a clean because the old ribbon had actually gone a bit mouldy. The machine had obviously been sitting around for quite a few years. So, let's grab the new ribbon and get it hooked onto one of the reels. Okay, that's onto the hooky prong part. And now it's just a simple case of winding it on, which will take quite some time. Okay, that's probably about enough ribbon on the reel. This is actually a typewriter ribbon which is longer than I need, so I'll just cut it off to a suitable length. And keep the extra bit for another day. So we'll get that hooked onto the prongy thing on this reel, like that. There we go, one reel ready to fit. Okay, time to put the ribbon on. So, we'll put the first reel over the spindle here. So there's a little flappy bit that you have to move out of the way to get the reel on. So get that on there and engaged with the drive. And then it has to go inside of this post, that stops it getting tangled in the gear here. So I'll just get it inside that one. Then outside of this post, like that. Then across in front of the um, number wheels, outside of this post. And then the second reel goes onto the spindle here. Again, you've got the flappy bit that you can hold out of the way while you drop the reel into place. And just reposition the ribbon that's gone the wrong side of this corner post. It's kind of trickier to do working around a tripod than it should be. And it's just slightly dropped off the reel here, so I'll just give it a bit of tension, a bit of slack, sorry, and get it back in place. And there we go, one ribbon in place. So the next thing to do is to put a reel of paper in and make sure it's working and if it's okay then I can clean up the case, reassemble it and test it properly. So I'll just do a quick test with a reel of paper. Just get rid of some of that rubbish. Right, let's have a look. entirely correct yet. Okay so for a quick update if I enter a number and print that it prints okay but if I then go to the total which prints in red it's actually missing the bottom of the characters so I think there's a bit of an alignment issue so I'll have a look at that in a second. Okay, another little update. The number wheels, which are this lot here, when they print, they hammer against the platen roller here. And they're suspended in these little grooves in this plate. And I think over time there'd been wear on the actual bit of metal that suspends the number wheels. But the entire plate has an adjustment screw, one on each side, and there's a slotted hole. So if you slacken the adjustment screw, you can realign this plate to get the alignment right with the platen roller. And that's what I've just done. So I'll reposition the machine and we'll see if it's printing a bit better. 
Okay, I've repositioned, so hopefully you'll be able to see when I print out. So I'll just enter a number into the um, keypad and pull the lever to print that out. And that's printed pretty clearly. And if I go now for a total, it should print the same thing in red. And yeah, all the numbers are more or less striking. It's probably as good as it ever was anyway. So now I think I can just clean the case, put the machine back together, and then demonstrate all its features. I think that'll do for this video. I'll save the demonstration for part two. I'll put a link to that video in the description when it goes live in a few days time. If you've enjoyed watching, feel free to like the video and subscribe to the channel. There'll be more vintage stuff and repairs coming soon. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a future video.